So we're still on break until One Piece chapter 1087 comes out. And I wanted to do something a little different, just a, a little more fun. Lately, I've been thinking about the life of the Straw Hats after the final war and after the One Piece is found and the world's changed and the adventure's done. Where are they going to be? What could they be doing in the epilogue of the story, so to speak? So I thought I'd talk about the Straw Hats' next adventures after everything comes to an end and just kind of, you know, headcanon where I think they could be. And we got to start with Luffy, my captain. Oh, captain, my captain. So if he's not dead by the end of the series, hey, hey, it's a possibility that man's body is beat up. More than likely, he's still going to be adventuring the seas and exploring new islands that he comes across. That is, given that the rest of the crew is still together and not disbanded. But if he's not dead or adventuring, then retired? If Oda decides to ship characters at the end of the series, then he's either settling with Nami, which makes the most sense to me, or Boa if Oda wants to go the Sasuke and Sakura route type of relationship, which, please don't. Don't get me started on that. Then there's Zoro. My initial thought for Zoro was, what if he became a sword instructor? I'd like to think that Zoro would return back to Shimotsuki village and take over the dojo that trained him while he was a child. That would be kind of the most touching scenario for him to end up in. Maybe not the most likely, but the most heartwarming to see him give back to the original dojo that he came from. My second thought I had for Zoro was him going back to being a bounty hunter actually, where he goes around for the biggest fishes in the sea to take the next bounty and just like Mihawk, looks for the next challenger for his title. You know, who's worthy of the world strongest swordsman while bounty hunting we pivot over to Sanji Sanji seems a little easier for me to guess a famous world-class chef a chef de cuisine if you will at the heart of the all blue with finding the all blue being Sanji's primary goal and motivation for joining the straw hats originally aside from making Luffy the king of the pirates now it feels most fitting to see him open up his most restaurant in the center of the all blue and returning to his roots as a cook and really just as an inspiration to Zeph and you know where he was brought up with Nami continuing her goal of mapping all the islands and the world is where I see her that is given she doesn't complete it before the end of the story which however the way the grand line is structured and the straw hats having gone down one of several pathways to the last island I don't see it being a goal that is achieved within the main story but I do see it being completed say in the epilogue or in like an epilogue cover story kind of thing. You know, Nami maps the last of the islands. So it definitely feels like more of an epilogue achievement rather than something that she's gonna finish before the end of the main story. Now, Usopp is another interesting one because if he's also not dead- Oh my God. It, it, that one could happen too. It could happen too. Theories going around that his achievement of becoming a great warrior of the sea involve his sacrifice and death so i'm just saying that makes sense but i wouldn't want it to happen i don't want him to be dead but it would be a fitting possibility but if he is still alive after achieving his dream living out the rest of his days in elbaf among the giants and retelling his stories while sailing with the pirate king is kind of you know just the spot that i see him the easiest for chopper Traveling doctor for sure if he's gonna be able to learn how to cure every sickness He's got to travel to all different locations where there are different bacteria different sick viruses um, Ailments so to speak I'm having a brain fart where he can learn how to treat each of those things And I hope he learns how to cure the smile fruit effects back in Wano because that is such a loose end that Oda just Kind of throughout you had marco you had law you had chopper there and zero addressing the issue so hey maybe that's something chopper is going to go back on please we'll, we'll wait and see it's a little bit of copium it's a little bit of hopium but i'm gonna huff it just a little bit you know give out of the benefit give out the benefit of the doubt and say that he's gonna bring chopper back over there moving over to robin I can see her in a few spots, actually. One of the more fitting, in my opinion, it would be her being like the founder of a university dedicated to the people of Ohara, like Clover University or University of Ohara. 
It'd be fitting for her to learn more about the void century and just the general history of the world. And after doing something about it, call back to her conversation with Rayleigh and the final war ending, sharing that knowledge with the rest of the world. Or what about an archeologist? What if there are more things that are worth learning about that she's gonna be traveling, you know, outside of the crew to go discover? Raman could continue to write on the history of the world and discoveries that she makes and submit them to the college that she founded. Now, Brooke is gonna be a musician again. I mean, he, he was the musician of the crew. He went on live tours during the two-year time skip in order to train. I think returning back to that musician life is where he's gonna end up going. Playing music in order to promote the Straw Hats and Luffy's achievements as a Pirate King. Settling back into music with a nasty return tour is pretty easy for our Soul King. Frankie's definitely gonna be a scientist. If Vegapunk is still alive at the end of Egghead, or the end of the series for that matter, Seeing them together as partners, Frankie and Vegapunk, it would make sense. Helping Vegapunk discover ways to produce unlimited energy, maybe through cola, new inventions. If Vegapunk isn't alive, Frankie could be carrying on his work using the resources left behind from Egghead. Granted, Egghead doesn't get completely destroyed during this arc, or if it is, they'll have a backup somehow, I'm assuming. Now, Jinbei's one I had to put a little more thought into. Because of his strong ties to Fisher Tiger and the Neptune army while working as a soldier, he could return to Fishman Island and continue to work inside the Neptune kingdom, maybe on more of the side of a politician this time, as an ambassador, or as the general of the Neptune army serving directly under King Neptune. Now there are a couple of honorable mentions and I say honorable mentions for now because they aren't official crew members yet. Princess Vivi is the first one, though she's already been an honorary straw hat for since Alabasta. I don't see her staying with the crew very long, even if she does end up joining temporarily before the end of the series, because her rightful place just seems to be as a ruler of Alabasta and not a permanent member of the Straw Hat crew. Yamato's the second one. For all the controversy Yamato had as a character in general, I'm not gonna go into that. We're definitely gonna see more of Yamato during the final war, along with Momonosuke and the Scabbards. At least that's my assumption. And after all is said and done, probably end up returning to Wano with Momonosuke like she is now and just be Wano Country's guardian alongside the Scabbards. But how do you guys feel about some of these achievements shown in a cover story and not the main story if it does if these any of these things do happen at all like nami landing at the last island for the full world map or zoro's first day as an instructor in shimotsuki village cover stories would you like that or would you want it to be in like a full chapter maybe like a a few pages for sanji a few pages for nami a few pages for Zoro, then the next chapter it's you know, a few pages for Chopper and so on. Also, update for the channels ahead, twitch.tv slash Wrath the Reptar. We'll continue with the gaming variety streams for now, a lot of just chatting stuff, reaction content, and the content on this channel will continue to be primarily One Piece. Hopefully chapter reaction streams soon, shorts, uh, more videos. Those reaction streams will probably be during the evenings, the day that it gets released. And I'm also going to start a second channel on here on YouTube. So stay tuned out for that. It's going to be more focused on gaming and gaming news and just variety content in general. Much of what I do on stream will be edited and posted on the new channel. And I'll even have some video essay stuff, much like Moist Critical or Mogul Mail and Ludwig. But for the time being, YouTube streams for the second channel will stay gaming until there's more of a reason to do reaction variety stuff on YouTube because you know, YouTube thumbnails for every stream is just kind of a pain. All that being said, I got a lot of content planned across Twitch here on this channel on YouTube and on the second channel soon. So once that starts up, I'll make sure everyone knows. You can also follow me on TikTok at Wrath of Reptar, Twitter at Wrath of Reptar. It's basically just Wrath of Reptar on all platforms, makes it really easy for you guys to find me. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe, turn on those post notifications. And thank you for tuning in, and I hope you all have a wonderful night.